So I thought we could start by talking about when you first came to the book. When did you when did you first read it? So the first time I read The Northern Lights, I think I was 10, um, and I actually stole my copy <laughs> from, I was around a family friend's house, and we, and I just saw it, this picture of this girl with something shiny in her hands with a bear standing behind her, and I thought, that looks good. So I, I literally just stole it from their house, and it's not left my house <laughs> since. So. Excellent. A stolen book. I'm... I remember when I first came to it that one of the things that surprised me most was the bit about the demons and coming back to it, that first scene, I'd forgotten just how strange it was um, because it, it's really eerie and uncanny and I don't know, if did you find the same thing? I sort of had the opposite reaction. To me it made total sense and you know, immediately started planning what my demon would be. Um, what would your demon be? Oh, see, I'd love to say something cool, like a snow leopard or something, <laughs> but I think it's probably like either a really clumsy kitten that that sort of never grows mm -hmm. up, or maybe an otter, because oh, I'm, I'm actually great. happier in the water, and they look cute, but they're actually quite fierce. Yeah, so. no, I can understand that. I think um, mine would probably be a fox. I think. Oh, lovely! Because I'm, I think quite, it was quite a scruffy person. No, so <laughs> no, I am really, really. Yeah. Um, so I think it would need to be something that was a little. And I prefer being out in the countryside. I'm not a city dweller, but that's why I think I would need to be something a little bit in wild, element. wild and scruffy. Um, and yeah, I think what surprised me about it, though, first coming to it, was that the and it's something that I think he does that's so clever is having a world that is so nearly our own and isn't. And I think it was one of those books that really struck me how people think of fantasy as being far away fantasy. Yes. Um, and I know it's something that I noticed in your books as well, of having the fantasy sit so near to yes. the reality. Was it something you feel was an influence when you were around? Oh, hugely. I mean, the Northern Lights are probably the single biggest influence and inspiration um, for my writing. Um, and I. And yes, that idea of fantasy not having to be dragons and, and sort of these far-flung places, but actually places that we inhabit, but just tilted slightly to let that magic in. Yeah. Something that really appealed to me um, as a reader and continues to appeal to me as a reader as well as a writer. Yeah, it definitely appeals to me too. And I think um, there all these moments where you just start to get comfortable and you feel, I, I know where this world is. Get your and then, yeah, you and then, then there'd <laughs> suddenly be something that just would, would throw you instantly. And I think, and I like the fact that all of the adults around Lyra don't re they they respond to her very much in their own adult world and she's having to enter into that that world rather than the world seeming to change around her to, to sort of alter to her existence it's she has to kind of fight her way into that world and I, and I, yes. I liked that did you have any which are your favorite scenes in the in, in the book coming back to it it's a very hard question you know <laughs> so possibly my favorite scene is where is the very final the very final mm. pages yeah. as possibly my favorite scene of the whole series I mean that every time I read that final line my heart just lifts yeah. I'm just desperate to read the next book but before that I love Yorick um, when they first meet him yeah he's um, an amazing character he's such an amazing character and, and just the, the sadness of that scene yeah. um, and the intensity of that scene and then the way that the connection kind of builds between him and Lyra yeah. um, was possibly my favorite sort of relationship in the first book yeah. but there are so many good scenes I'm just sort of flicking through them in my head now and they're just it's impossible really mm. to to narrow it down they're just scene after scene of brilliance yeah <laughs> and I think because it's quite a shocking book as well I mean I think right from that first scene when you know you've got somebody trying to poison someone right the way through to I'd, going back to the book, I'd forgotten just how shocking the scene with the cutting away of the, 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 the demons is yes. and that moment when Lyra's caught and you, th that you think that, that her demon is about to be torn away from her. And it, I mean, it's, it's utterly painful. It's just... I yeah. think it's that she meets a character called Tony and he's asking for his ratta <gasps> and just reading that, just coming to it cold if you sort of pick up the book and open it on a random page, it's just heartbreaking. Mm. Um, and as someone who had a, a cat, much loved cat growing mm. up, it, the scenes with all the demons sort of separated um, when the sort of ghost like was just heartbreaking yeah. and yeah, incredibly sad. And I think it's a very brave thing to have those kind of ideas even coming into into a, a, a book like this for, for, for children because yes. I mean that the idea of having a part of your personality wrenched away from you is a really bold concept I mean it's a difficult concept even for an, an adult I think yeah um, and do you think that 
it changed the way that children's that children's writers operated afterwards do you think it opened some doors for people in terms of what they felt they could explore I mean I'm not kind of up to date with what came before but I mean definitely for for me as a writer it gives it gives you permission mm -hmm. to go to those darker places and you do see sort of much darker themes emerging and and that children respond to those themes mm. and that they're able to deal with that and sort of um, and the way that Pullman sort of guides you through it, yeah. that, you know, there is always that comfort, like she always has Pantalimon there yeah. with her, um, sort of comforting her, and while they're scared, she's never alone. Yeah. I think it's the loneliness that of the children without their demons that is so terrifying as a child to read about, but Lyra, who we're seeing the world through, always has that companion, so yeah. I think there's that comfort. So I think, yes, it gives you permission to be darker as long as there's hope. As well, there's that moment where you realise that, that you're getting to see inside someone's mind and to see the split in someone's personality. Yeah. And I think it's such a clever way of um, getting to the heart of the fact that you can feel more than one thing at once and think more than one thing at once. As a, yes. as, and and the, the way that you come to know Lyra is essentially through one part of her personality talking to another. Yes. And I think just just thinking about that as a concept where it's that comes genius. from. Yeah, it's genius. As I mean. a writer, it's a brilliant device if you're going to reduce mm. it to sort of the technicalities of how he does it. It's a brilliant way to get into a character's head without sort of huge exposition. Yes. Um, yeah. it's, it's an amazing idea. And it means that you can have all this questioning of why she's making decisions and that be completely natural. There's no, um, you know, you don't have to have her, if you say, explaining everything that she does because there's someone else there saying, are you sure you want to do this really yes. reckless, <laughs> quite sort of crazy thing? Um, and she's going, no, yep, yeah, definitely going to do it. <laughs> um, and I thought it was interesting as well, narratively, um, it's, it struck me, not, I don't think the first time I read it overtly, but certainly coming back to it, the, and I wondered if it did with you as well, that um, normally for children, if they sort of start off as orphans, which is effectively where Lyra starts, then finding their parents would be something that would be Happy. this kind of, yeah, this kind of brilliant <laughs> thing. And that for, obviously for, for Lyra, that's not. And so that she has this very different arc of, um, going through that stage of feeling that she's found somewhere and belonging when she's with Mrs. Coulter and then effect effectively ending up almost an orphan again at the end, but yes. but through choice rather than... And what a disappointment her her parents turn out to be for all their, their service brilliance and, and um, they as individuals might be brilliant, but as parents they, they utterly yes. <laughs> <laughs> fail. And uh, yes, I and throughout the book, throughout this first book, that she constantly has hope. So when she sees them together for the first time, mm. there's this sort of huge lifting and joyous sort of the way that she sees them is so joyous mm. together. And then it's, it's all torn apart almost instantly. Right. And I think it's amazing to see such a flawed relationship through a child's eyes. Mm. I think he depicts it so tenderly and and fiercely as well. He captures kind of the, the real opposition in their relationship. And yeah, it's uh, one of my favourite things about the, the book is just that the way that he shows he shows adults to be so flawed mm. and and for the children to um, to be sort of seeing that clearly. Yeah, I think the the fact that he takes I mean, he takes in so many locations as well on this. I mean, obviously, we're having this conversation in Oxford, and um, and you you live in Oxford, so yes. do you do you feel as though you see Lyra coming around the, the corner so <laughs> when you when you walk around? Because I mean, Oxford's such a huge part of the of the book, isn't it? Isn't yes, it? and the college is uh, obviously um, very evocative. And yes, Lyra's Oxford. I, I loved that book, mm. and um, I was given a copy when I moved to Oxford. Oh, and fantastic. so it's a very nice sort of guide to way to see the city. Yeah, it's great to talk to you about all of that today, and I can't wait till we meet up again to talk about characters.